your opportunity uh, to ask me anything you want to know about writing. I know a lot about it because that's kind of like all I do. And I'm happy to answer your questions. Go ahead. Um, are you going to do a cryptid hunter on the Jersey Devil? Oh, am I going to do a cryptid on the Jersey Devil? Yeah. No, but I know a lot about the Jersey Devil, by the way. It's pretty interesting. The cryptid series is done. The good thing about my series is they're all finished. Have you guys ever read a series book and had to wait for a year for the next one to come out or two? Yeah. 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 I can be self-righteous now because mine are complete. So, I mean, mine are actually safe to read. There's not going to be no more cryptid hunters, no more storm runners, no more IQ. They're all complete. Everybody lives happily ever after. Maybe. Do you ever write argumentative writing? Argumentative? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of one of those English things. You know, I get lots of emails from you guys, and they're saying, what is the theme of, you know, whatever book? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. So I don't really think about argumentative writing. I don't know what it is. But I, I don't really think about that. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's something to kind of learn in school and stuff. When you write uh, fiction for a living, you don't really think about that so much. I think about story. And, uh, how things are kind of constructed and so forth, but I don't worry too much about theme. I never get preachy in my writing. I don't like that when I read the book. If someone's kind of trying to, you know, persuade me to do something in the book, I, I just want to read a book. I don't, you know what I mean? And I can make up my own mind. Go. What's your spirit animal? Uh, go. Uh, did you like writing when you were a Yeah, I actually did like writing when I did, but we didn't get to write in school. Um, so in English in school, what we got to do for, well, I don't know, 12 years, is diagram sentences. <laughs> so we know, I know uh, the parts of speech really, really well because we never really got to write anything, essentially. We got up and we got to tear other people's writing apart and try to figure it out and diagram it on a chalkboard in front of everybody. So it, it, English, and it's much better now. I mean, at least you guys get a chance to write things, which is really good. So I kind of wrote things on my own. I mean, obviously in high school and college I wrote. You know, that was really fun for me. Uh, but when I was growing up, I kind of had to write things all for myself. It didn't even count for schoolwork. Uh, have you ever written a story about someone you've met in your life? Yeah, I mean, like all my characters in my books are based on people I know, people I've read about, my imagination, and there's a little bit of me in all those characters too, including the bad guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, so they're kind of combination characters. Does that make sense? I'll tell you a story. So, uh, in Peak, there's a camera crew that's filming them, and the camera crew is uh, J.R., Will, and Jack, okay? And those are my three grandsons. Okay, but then I had a fourth grandson. His name's Ethan. And when he, when he got old enough to read Pete, he said, and my, my grandkids call me Gramps. He goes, Gramps. He has a really weird voice. Gramps. And I go, yeah. He goes, how come I'm not in Pete? <laughs> and so I said, because you weren't born. And he goes, that's no excuse. <laughs> Apparently I was supposed to know about him before he was even born. And so when I wrote The Edge, I, of course, put him in. And... Uh, uh, I said, read this book, and he read the book, and he's in that book. One of the major characters, actually. And he calls me on the phone, he goes, Grams. He goes, yeah. And he goes, I read The Edge. And I said, yeah. He goes, I'm the hero. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he goes, you got it right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So sometimes I use uh, people I know just because it's fun to do, you know? Go. Who are your favorite authors? Who are my favorite authors? Well, I read two or three books every week, and so I have a lot of favorite authors. I mean, there's people I follow and read their books. Um, but if you made me choose one book, my all-time favorite book of all time, above everybody else's, it's a, it's a novel written by a woman named Harper Lee. And she wrote a book called The Kill a Mockingbird. And you, you're going to be made to write it in eighth grade. Oh, no, eighth grade. Eighth grade. grade. We're well, all going to complain about it. But anyway, it's like it's like a good book. Like I have a signed copy of that book, and um, which is pretty rare. So like my house got fire, I grabbed that book, my last year, I, and my wife. Not in that order, but I would, that's what I would take. So that's my favorite book. It is a great book. I mean, it's like perfect. Um, so why did you pass up the chance to write about nonfiction? I wrote ten nonfiction books. No, I mean about the 
What about it? You passed up the chance to write a nonfiction event. Oh, about the rainforest? Because I wrote uh, Jaguar. And if you read Jaguar, you're going to learn a lot about the rainforest. Okay, because awesome. a lot of stuff that's in Jaguar is absolutely true. All the science in it is absolutely true. But it's part of a cool adventure story. Also, well, I still don't really understand this. I'm a little confused. So the reason you chose to be a writer is because you were into writing and because you don't have to pay for the tablet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here's how it works. Let me explain it. I get that. I see how that might be confusing. So what happens is this. When I get an idea for a book, I send it to a publisher, and they say yes or no. Most of the time they say yes now. And so what they do is they give me a bunch of money to write that book. Then you're getting the money to travel. Well, I use it to travel. I use it to travel. Does that make sense? How are other people for your travel books? Because I got paid to write the book. You got the money for like free. Okay, let's do an example. I gotta explain this. I want you to understand this. So, let's say I'm gonna write a book. I say, okay, Roland, we'll give you fifty thousand dollars. And I go, okay. And they give me like twenty-five thousand dollars up front. Okay. And I use some of that money, not all the money, if I have to do any research. Does that mean if I have to travel whatever, I'll pay for it? It's fine. And then I finish the book, and then they give me another $25,000. That's how that's how writers are paid. So you get money up front. You usually don't get that much. But I mean, you, you get your up front, OK? So now, the publishers have paid you $50,000 to write a book. When the book comes out, you have to earn that advance back. So you have to actually earn back that $50,000 by book sales, OK? And all writers get paid the same way. So, you don't get so on a hardback book, you make 10% of whatever it sells for, like in a Barnes & Noble. Let's say, we make it simple, let's say a book sells for $15. That means every time a hardback book sells, I make $1.50. And paperbacks, you make about $0.35. Cents. Everybody's paid this way. J.K. Rowling is paid this way, the same way. She sells more books than me. But, and, so you, and you get paid every six months. Okay, So you get a check every six months. So writers actually don't know how much money they're going to make. It all depends on how many books sell. Does that make sense? But then you're more likely to earn more because you're selling books all over the country. You're selling books all over the world, not just in, yeah. just, not just in this country. And so, and I have a lot of books out. Like I have 27 novels out, and they're all in print, which is perfect for me. And so, obviously, in newer books, I make a lot more money on. But the books that have been out for over 20 years, I still make money on those. Does that make sense? And they've earned back their advance. You know, they've earned that whatever the money they gave me up front to write that book. Does that make sense? It's almost like a math problem. Right? Yeah. So that's kind of how it works. It's actually exactly how it works. <laughs> Go. Um, how do you come up with, like, um, interesting things that happen? Well, because I'm an interesting guy. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I'm a big reader, you know what I mean? I mean, you have to, when you read a book, you should look at the things that really kind of when you read somebody else's book, see what is interesting. You know, you do research and these kind of really weird things that you think might be interesting for other people. I kind of, I kind of try to write the kind of books that I like to read. You know what I mean? Because I'm interested in what I'm interested in, and I and I'm uh, arrogant enough to think that if I'm interested in something, other people are going to be interested in too. And, and to some extent, I'm correct. Does that make sense? So you write about what's interesting to you, and hopefully, other people will be interested in it too. I don't know if that answers that thoroughly enough, but go. Out of all the books you've written, which ones sell the best? Um, I, to, to be honest, I actually don't pay a lot of attention to sales. And the reason I, I don't have to, because I have like an agent and an entertainment attorney and a certified public accountant and a wife. <laughs> <laughs> they pay really close attention to that. But I would guess it's peak. Peak came out, I don't know, now, 10 years ago, and it sells really, really well every year. It's used in a lot of schools and stuff, lucky for me. But you have no control over that. You know, you have no control over which book sells more than uh, others. My favorite book is Beneath. It's okay. It, does, it sells okay. Um, but I think Peak outsells it. I mean, people seem to really love that book. And I like it. I mean, I think it's a really good book. I don't send a book in unless I like it. Um, yeah. Go. Have you ever put like because you're you, you say like you put people like that like interesting people or people that you've met before in your stories? Have you ever put Billy in your story? No. <laughs> you should. I just use him mercilessly at school visits. <laughs> Go. Um, have you ever like thought of writing a book where like there's been a lesson taught in the end? Oh, a lesson? No. I don't. 
I don't like books like that. I, I'm just honestly, you know, I, the lesson learned yeah, the lesson learned. You know, the moral. I, yeah, it's just not my thing. I don't like reading those kind of books, really. I just don't like it. I don't like watching movies where they jam some lesson down their throat and stuff. That'll ruin a story for me every single time. I just don't like that. I mean, just I can make up my mind, figure out what's right and wrong. I don't need to have it hammered into my brain over and over. I think that ruins stories. But that's just me personally. Some people like learning lessons. And maybe you'll learn lessons from my book, but it's certainly not intentional. Um, when did you like get the interest to start reading? Oh, you know what? I don't remember learning to read, but I'm sure some poor teacher had to teach me to read. So like at five, I couldn't read, but probably by seven, I was a pretty good reader. And I don't know how that happened. Did you always like reading? I always liked it as soon as I could read. I was fascinated with reading before I learned how to read. Some of my earliest memories are taking books off my parents' shelf and looking at the words and wondering what the heck that was. I used to be a book sniffer when I was a little kid. So I'd pull them off and go, man, that smells good. I just like the smell of it. So I've been kind of in love with books for a very long time. Um, so since you read so many books and you also write a lot of books, is it hard not to copy some ideas from other books? Uh, no, I mean, I don't, I mean, yeah, do I copy ideas? I might copy techniques, you know what I mean? I mean, not the book and stuff, but if I see a pretty interesting technique that somebody's writing in kind of a different way, I might incorporate at least some of that in my book, but I'm not really copying their ideas or any of their story. Does that make sense? The other thing I do, this is interesting, is I don't write a book until I've read all the books uh, like the one I want to write. And if somebody writes a book that's really, really good in a, on, a, on kind of a subject, I'm thinking about writing, and they do it in a way that I would probably do it. Then I won't. I won't uh, write a book that way. So that's actually part of, part of the research. You guys know who Gordon Carmen is. Yeah. yeah. So he's really popular. I know him pretty well. And um, I was going to write Peak, and, and then uh, when I was in the middle of writing the rough draft for Peak, Gordon Carmen came out with a short three-book series about climbing Mount Everest, and I went, Oh no! And so I read his three books and. Um, they're really good. I really liked his books, but he has a real different take on it than I did. You know, what I mean, the whole—I mean, climbing Mount Everest is climbing Mount Everest, but just the whole why we do it and stuff like that was incredibly different. Does that make sense? Which allowed me to write the book I wanted to write about Everest, even though Gordon had done it and done it well, by the way. Does that make sense to you? So I'm not copying him, um, but we're writing about the same thing. Go. Um, have you ever rewritten a book that you didn't like and not had it published just for entertainment? No, no I don't really write so much for entertainment anymore because i got to make a living. But um, Elephant Run's a really kind of a good example of that. Okay, so I got contracted. Somebody paid me to write Elephant Run. So I went to Burma, I did the research, and I wrote the novel. Uh, but I didn't like it. And the publisher called me up and said, uh, is Elephant Run done? And I said, yeah. And they said, can we have it? And I go, no. And they go, why not? I said, because I don't like it. And they said, well, let us be the judge of that. And I said, that's exactly what I'm afraid of. <laughs> because um, at some point in your career, uh, they're going to publish anything you write if you get successful. You know what I mean? Because they know they're going to sell a certain number of copies, regardless of whatever, and publishers or businesses. And so I, didn't, I wouldn't give it to them. And they said, what are you going to do? I go, I'm going to rewrite it. I did that four times. So there's actually four different versions of Elephant Run. And it wasn't until the fifth time that I got it right, which is why that book took me 10 years to finish. You know, it just wasn't right. I mean, it was OK. I'm sure you guys would have liked it, you know what I mean? But I didn't like it. And so I don't really send a book in unless I really like it, unless I think it's really good. Oh, if I wasn't a writer, I'd probably be retired from the... I was a pretty famous zoologist, <laughs> and so I could have done anything. I left at the peak of my career, as soon as I got the wolves out and did the uh, gray wolf thing, I quit to, to write full time. Because I knew um, that nothing as cool as that would ever happen to me again. And so it was kind of... I mean, I would have made a living, but it was kind of downhill. Does that make sense? I already did what I wanted to do when I worked at a zoo, the first thing I ever wanted to do in the zoo is let things go. But if you do that, when you're a zookeeper, you get fired. 
<laughs> so I got to, I got to let things go and not get fired for it. It's like really cool. Um, and so I'd probably still be working with animals, um, but at this age, I would have done it for so long. I mean, I started when I was 18. So that means I would have been in the business like almost 50 years. You know what I mean? So I'd be sitting around not knowing what to do with myself, essentially. I'm sure. Yep. Um, who's your favorite author? Harper Lee. Mm -hmm. Remember? Mm -hmm. Does writing ever get boring? No. Did that happen in the last one? The last year. Yeah, okay, I'm getting them all mixed up. Uh, no. I mean, so think how bored you'd be reading my book if I got bored when I was writing it. Wouldn't be so good, would it? Go. For beneath, like our class read it together. Yeah. How, like, how do you come up with like the complex idea of like all that like weird stuff going on in the tunnels? Well, I made it up. I made it up by researching. So I mean, like the weather underground, mm -hmm. they're real people. I grew up with the weather underground. They're in my generation. They are? So those are real people. Yeah. Like, like that, like when they were in like the backyard. Did that like happen to you? Like Blowing up? Yeah. No, but I used to dig tunnels in the backyard. <laughs> and did? I put it in McLean, Virginia because that's where my daughter used to live. It's a really secure community. <laughs> There's secret service everywhere, but because CIA is right there. But uh, um, so all those things are kind of based on little things that I know about. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did I ever blow up in a thing? No. <laughs> no. When you're researching, do you ever just want to like start writing? Like, yeah, all the time I want to start writing, but I just take, take notes. That's kind of like writing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I don't get bored researching because I don't research any, something I don't like. Yeah. You know what I mean? I only research things I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. Go. And your book been made. Why did you capitalize dumpster? What's that? In your book been made, why did you capitalize dumpster? Oh, uh, because it's actually a brand name. What? A dumpster is a brand name, like Kleenex. If you write Kleenex, that's a brand name, and you have to capitalize it. That's the law. So dumpster is actually a brand name. Everybody calls everything a dumpster, but actually there's only one dumpster. I know. Ha ha. How about that? That's the thing that editors find out for you. So I might have put lowercase, and they went, no. It has to be capitalized, you know, because it's a brand name. All brand names need to be capitalized. It's the law. Because they came up with that name. Go. This is kind of falling on your question and beneath, because I love the book and I really wanted to know, is there actually like a government fallout shelter like miles underground? No. <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> it could be. Probably. Yeah, no, I made that up. How many books did you write that weren't published? Uh, lots when I was really young and stuff. Most of the books, I mean, for the last 25 years have all got published eventually. I mean, they usually are they're paid for ahead of time. I say, I'm going to write about this, and they go, okay. Yeah, I mean, and then I write the book and stuff. So, um, uh, but lots of books. I wrote a bunch of books. And by the way, I had those books. I looked at them. There's a really good reason why they weren't published. They were bad. <laughs> But at the time, I thought they were pretty good. Um, do you have um, like a new idea for another book that you might write in the future? Yeah, lots of them. Mm -hmm. I'm under contract to write a bunch of books. So I have to write the book I'm working on now to send. Then there's another book uh, after that. I'm not sure what we're going to call it. Uh, maybe Touche. My, my oldest uh, grandson, he's at the Ohio State. He's a fencer. And so I've been following fencing for many, many years, a really fascinating sport. I wanted to write about uh, fencing in Paris, and I wanted to write about the uh, Romanian pickpox, pickpockets in Paris. Um, you guys don't know anything about this, but there's big pick, pickpocket rings in Paris by the Romanians and stuff, and uh, I want to kind of tie those two things together in an adventure story, because I love Paris. And so that's one that I'm under contract to write, and uh, I may be writing a graphic novel, maybe we'll see. We were playing around some ideas for that. So I always have kind of something going, you know what I mean? Can you give me something to think about on the road? Go. Do you have a favorite spot where you like to write? Yeah, I, I, I like writing at home. You know what I mean? I like, my, I like my stuff. So I have an office at home. It's the smallest room in the house, and I like it. And that's my favorite place to write, although it's kind of distracting. I, I think in a way I write more on the road just because I'm kind of tight for time, and I really don't have anything else to do in my spare time. And so I, I sort of sometimes feel more focused, you know what I mean? Because your family's not around and stuff, you're not distracted. Um, but I can write anywhere. 
like Sasquatch. Sasquatch, I wrote the book in three weeks. The whole book on the road. So I wrote it in libraries and airports and hotels. And uh, it came out, it was really popular, and I thought to myself, this is cool, I can write a novel every three weeks. It's never happened again. <laughs> so every time I start a book, I went, oh, please be a three-week book. And the reason it didn't take very long is because I know a lot about Mount St. Helens, D.B. Cooper, and Bigfoot. So I didn't have to do a tremendous amount of research for that, and I lived there. So um, I wrote that thing on the road, the whole thing, in little bits and pieces. Yes. Well, I'm kind of in Go ahead. I'm kind of confused at your technique because you're saying because most of your books seem how you said you don't really like nonfiction, but then most of your books seem to incorporate some sort of nonfiction. Yeah, they all do. Wait, so like, is that like really meaningful? I'm just writing. I'm just writing things. That, I mean, I'm fictionalizing things that actually are going on. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, better sense. When you said about Elephant <coughs> Run that it took ten years really to finish, I'm trying to like it got me thinking what kept you going after something like that, you know? Oh, because I knew like... You I knew it was in there somewhere? And, and it was contract, I've been paid to do it. Okay. I mean, and so, yeah, I mean, I knew I could get this thing right. I mean, the way I wanted it anyway. Um, and a lot of times books change, so you start a book and you have a project, and it's, it's, it's very different of thinking of an idea and actually how it actually comes out, because you don't really know what the future is when you're working on a book. I mean, there's thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of questions and little things that happen when you're writing a book. Um, the reason I like Beneath so much is it came out exactly how I envisioned it when I first thought of the idea. And most books aren't that way. It doesn't mean they're worse or better, it just means they're different. But Beneath came out exactly the way I, I envisioned it when I first came up with the idea. You know, most books aren't that way. They just, they shift as you're, you know, kind of your own. What seems good in your head doesn't necessarily work good on the page, you know. Do you ever have, like, two ideas for two books and then combine them? Oh, two ideas for two books? No, not really. But I write about things I am interested in. Okay, let's we'll take the IQ series. So I'm really interested in music. And I'm really interested in... Uh, spies. And so I took those two ideas that I'm really interested in and combined them. The same thing on Sasquatch. I was very interested in Mount St. Helens, I was very interested in Bigfoot, and I was really interested in D.B. Cooper. So I took those three things and combined them to make a story. Does that make sense? Um, when you first started writing books, uh, did you plan to like continue writing uh, books for young adults? Well, that's a really good question. Like, why did I write for young adults? You know, I, I wrote a lot of adult novels that did not get published. And uh, and then I started reading some young adult novels and uh, as an adult myself. And I thought, wow, these are really, really good. And I wonder if I can do this. And so, and so I wrote Thunder Cave. And it's kind of a natural voice for me that, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15 year old is a pretty natural voice for me. I never matured, even though I look old. Um, uh, and so I just started writing that in that genre for young adults, really like it, and just kept with it. Will I write an adult novel someday? I don't know, maybe. I'm not under a lot of you know, pressure to do that. I have some ideas that would probably be better as adult novels. Uh, but I'm really so well established in a young adult novel, I'm not sure I would do that this late in the game. Uh, how are we doing for time? Uh, a couple minutes. Five minutes. Who, if you've asked a question, put your arm down. Um, have you ever had to get on contract and decided that you really want to do it? Yeah, I have. Like, I was contracted to write um, that nonfiction book, you know what I mean? And I decided not to do that. So I paid him back in the Road Jaguar instead. And so sometimes you change it, but you don't want to do that very often. Because it kind of hurts the publisher's feeling. It actually makes it mad. Did you ask a question? Yeah. Who hasn't asked a question? Go. Um, I know it might not be like a governing body um, in like the view, but then like, does like anybody like actually live like underneath? Like, like kind of a little underground? Yeah. Oh. They do. They do. They're called bold people. Look it up. 
M O L E E I bet there's stuff on the internet. I don't get my stuff off the internet, but you guys do. Last one. One more. Go. Have you ever written more than one book at the same time? I have, but I don't like doing it. Like I, like when I did that 39 Clues book, I was in the middle of doing a novel, and they called and said, "Will you write one of the 39 Clues books?" And because they come out every three months, I had to kind of shift back and forth between those books, and, and uh, it's very difficult to do, even for me. And I've written lots of books. Does that make sense? So I don't recommend that you do that. I think you write something and finish it, and then get on with the next thing. Anyway, you guys are great. Have a good lunch. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.